Mm. Greetings. Hello. This is Francis. Yay, nice to have you. So last time we spoke was more over a year ago. Um, we, we did a lot of research, theoretical mostly, but uh, we went way farther and closer to what you have studied. I see. So uh, let me update you just a little. So we finally was a, were able to connect the idea of DNA resonance and uh, consciousness. Yes. And the, the way we connected it is we, we, we uh, figured out the, that the DNA might resonate by sending the waves everywhere, but also it can resonate by sending the waves through the uh, filaments. And these filaments are called microtubules. And then the, the dimensionality of the transmission goes from like everywhere to actual wires. Because micro microtubules work as wires, so it's much more directional. And then all the nuclei of the body would be connected through this microtubule network, and that makes a lot more sense. It's more, more, works more like a computer rather than a loose network. Correct. It, that is very true, yes. So, and then you have, uh, and are, are you talking about this as it enters the brain? Is that the part you mean? Right, and the same thing in the brain. So the uh, nuclei, nuclei of the neurons would be playing the, the role, essential role in, in thinking. And right now the biology doesn't know about that. And I don't think you knew about that when you were here. No. It is something very new, but it makes a lot more sense. Now the DNA genomics is plugged in into the, into the thinking process directly. Yes. Now you have to plug that into the, all the different lobes and the different, the different ways the energy moves within the brain. So the, within the brain, there are also these tubes, but there are also other things as well that move thoughts around. The amygdala, for instance, is a wonderful, uh, it corrects information or actually it checks information to make sure that the information is a pause, uh, is doing the right thing. So it's bouncing this information off the amygdala uh, through these channels. And uh, so you have checks, checkpoints in the brain that will uh, reinforce the positive thoughts that were going on. Thank you. Uh, at the moment, I cannot bring the anatomical information into the picture because it's just oh. too far from my attention. Okay. My attention is uh, on the sequence of DNA. I'm still there looking at the same uh, double helix that you discovered. Correct. Discovered. Yes. But uh, now I, uh, the hypothesis is that the sequences which you are trying to interpret have a direct... Um, participation in, in consciousness. Correct. And that, that would explain why humans have so different, so much, di why our sequence is so much different from uh, many animals. Correct. We have the unique sequences uh, which are uh, feeling our, uh, at, at least 10% of our, over 10%, about 20% of our sequence is unique to humans and primates. So that is, is, I think, is what makes us different. And that's uh, ex specifically those sequences, ALU sequences, which are unique to primates, uh, should work in the brain. Yes, that is true. The next, uh, the next um, exercise we are doing is looking at the sequences and analyzing the, the Computation analyzes the sequences looking for traces of resonance. Yes. Uh -huh. And what have you found? Um, we're still looking. We just started looking. Now we, we just uh, looked at the first set of sequences. It's not too big, not too small, just a few thousand nucleotides. And we don't see the signal, but we would we see how it will appear on our graph. graph. So we build the tool to look at the patterns and uh, 
these patterns would be signature patterns of resonance. Just, just in the sequences, no, no, uh, no electromagnetic measurement. Just looking at the genomic sequence, we predict a few things just based on resonance ideas. And the main principle is that um, parallel chemical structure, like parallel nucleotides, when they align together, would resonate better than if they were not aligned. So aligned in a parallel fashion would resonate better. That's our main prediction. Yes. It comes from, from physics and uh, uh, crystallography. In crystallography, parallel structures are much more resonating. So it's kind of obvious when you think about it. But that allows, when you look at the DNA, uh, there is very little parallel there. And there is some things parallel, but but not many. Many things are angled to each other. Yes, uh -huh. this is true. But the that is meant for different kinds of resonations. If things will resonate better if they're in a parallel uh, state. But however, when when you have the angles as they are, they resonate differently and they resonate the way they should for different actions. It gives different, uh, it gives so many different variables, whereas a parallel would uh, be too stable in some ways to, to resonate all the different ways that it needs to. Excellent. I didn't think about that deeply, but I understand what you're saying. It's, it has been on the back burner. Yes. So, uh, our main prediction, which you are testing right now, at the simplest one, the simplest prediction is that to support the resonance, we would have to have parallel nucleotides yes. be of the same type. Yes. So, um, and then if you have, uh, say, the nucleotide purine, which is double, two, two, two ring, double ring, uh, two ring, how do you say, um, it's called um, purine anyway. You know purines are, we have two rings, a hexagon plus pentagon. So when yeah. we have purine in one position, then there is so many nucleotides which are angled. And then after a while, there is another nucleotide which is in, in parallel orientation. Then we predict there will be also purine so they could resonate to each other. Yes. And that is what we are testing. It's a nice prediction because it is a very, new nobody look, has looked at that and it's it's uh, very unobvious unless you think about uh them being parallel uh there is no reason for them to be uh both purines but now we predict that and if we find that that would be a, a i think that that you there are, is a reason. you're on to a very good discovery because this will show uh the different ways that they can send information throughout by not being, uh, by using so many different um, methods and energies. Mm -hmm. uh, and the resonance, the different measurements of the resonance will be important eventually. Right. But now, as you mentioned, that angled structures can also resonate. Uh, I can see that happening too, but the, the signal would go not in a uh, straight line, but it would Correct. be going like um, in a helical helical line. Yes. And I wonder what kind of predictions are there. It's you not very to clear be, to me. Uh, the thing is, yes, the energy is moving in all different directions when you're looking at uh, these tubul tubulars and... Uh, the nucleotides are, well, I, I don't even want to go into that, but right. um, you are going to do these experiments that are going to open your mind to uh, the movement of this energy and the resonance. So that is a very good thing, and it will give you clues to many other things. Uh, we just came across papers um, by... Zhu, Zhu and Marshall, two different uh, groups. Uh, they are looking at, um, actually, 
sugar phosphate backbone resonances. Uh, until now, I was more interested in nucleotides in the bases because they are different. They have four yeah. letters. While oh, yes. sugar that was what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, while sugar phosphate is uh, is uh, same all the t all, all through the DNA. Yes. But but exactly. they found some resonances there and uh, not found predicted they predicted some resonances there and uh, and um, the may the key lesson from their predictions was uh, they, they they also included the the, the bases as well but but it was a more uh, more inclusive structure it was a base plus sugar plus phosphate all together resonating as a as a structure, and Marshall also did triplets, so he looked at resonances of triplets. And um, his result was that his calculation showed that start codon of the protein and end codon of the, of the protein would have a different resonant, calculated resonances than all other codons. Codons are triplets. Yes. So, so it looks like even though his uh, assumptions were pretty Unrealistic, his result was very promising. Actually, yes. Many so the, howling dogs. Yes, yeah, so there is, a, there is a promise there which we still need to figure out what was the, what's the, how they call it, what is the model, what is the mechanistic model of this resonance, but including phosphate well, and sugars. I think that you will find, uh, what that your with your experimentations that that will uncover some of that as well so that is something that you keep that in mind uh -huh. because yeah, my your the way that you're going to do it will expose more things than what his way would expose yeah my uh my colleague uh, Nelly, she dug out the information that um, the triders uh, the triders are pyramids basically the triders are containing oxygens at their corners have unique um, uh, piezo piezoelectric properties or piezoelectric properties which are basically when you twist them they, uh, they produce electricity or yes. when you send, send electricity they uh, they they twist yes um, so uh, these tetriders are around phosphates, so each phosphate has a tetrider of oxygens around them. Yes. And um, same thing happens in uh, collagen, which is a very big, important part of the body, a protein on the body, and uh, in bones, which is also very essential. So essentially, uh, these uh, oxygen tetriders are in DNA, collagen, and bones. And um, now it gives us the clue how all these things are connected together through um, vibrations. And this pure electricity, uh, the essence of it is that it converts sound and electricity and electricity into sound. Yes. So now we have the clue how the sound is involved and how the resonation of the sound in, in bones resonates with DNA. Yes. So uh, you have come a long way, actually, from where I was. I did, right. I did not have those, uh, that thought path pattern, but, um, but that is uh, definitely an advancement on what I knew. All right. I can see from where I am now that, there, that you will also move even farther beyond that and uh, discover some things inadvertently, I'm sure. But um, very good in your logical thinking that you're doing, uh, that these experiments and these thought processes will pan out to be very good for you. Thank you. Continue um, to do what you need to do in this way. Yeah, the next uh, finding, again, theoretical was, I mean, we found literature, experimental literature, with so-called um, 
Bon Khan, Bon Khan Network, Bon Khan Kim Network, and um, Prima. Yeah, and uh, it's also called Prima System, Primo System. So um, essentially, it is a, a cellular network, which is the basis or the, the big, big part of the acupuncture meridian system. It is based in the skin. That's why acupuncture works on the skin really well. And then it sends the uh, signals yeah. through the uh, channels, like um, cellular channels, uh, material cellular channels to all over the body, to the organs and to the cells. It looks like it is a special system which regulates the body in many ways and possibly regulates the, the shape of the body as well. Does it release any chemicals when they do the acupuncture? I'm sure it does. It's, it's uh, you know, the chemical side is not too interesting to me at the moment. I'm more I interested see. in vibrational side. Well, the vibrational side is most am amazing, really. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, so I think there is also chemical reaction as well. But, um, and some of that is very important to some organs and some thought processes, depending on which, where they put the needle in. Right. So the needles seem to be working as an antenna. Yes. And, and um, catching some, some waves, which we don't know what waves they are, these are, but some biological waves and then um, connecting that to the Bonhan network. Uh, and then um, that somehow gets into the DNA. And that part is, I mean, the, the, the story goes that these cells in the Bonhan network, they resonate and then say reson send resonances through the channels Every, to other yeah. cells. And that's, so, so basically it's a highway or how do you say, material highway of the DNA resonances. It's not just another uh, piece to the puzzle. Well, when you look at it that way, then you see that the in, there is information in the universe. Uh, the universe is totally digitized in some way. And when the information comes, the vibration goes through the needle, it is specific to um, what it wants to speak to in the body. Otherwise, it would not have gone into that area. So there is a greater understanding outside this realm as well as within it. Right. Um, so my key question, of course, is how is, is it related to the DNA sequence? And now I assume that the DNA sequence um, somehow supports certain wave patterns or wave shapes. And these wave shapes uh, of DNA co correspond to certain acupuncture points and to certain uh, meridians. So basically they have like a liver meridian. So I would assume that the DNA have certain, a certain shape of wave which resonates with it, which would correspond to the liver meridian. Yes, that makes sense. So we are looking at those. And again, coming from Marshall, which I just mentioned, um, uh, he was, uh, I think because he was illiterate in biology, he was a computer, uh, uh, an electronic engineer, or he is an electronic engineer. So he by somehow, somehow confused the, the protein coding triplets of nucleotides with uh, Reson, uh, uh, resonating triplets of nucleotides. For me, these were different, but because he found some resonation in triplets, now I'm thinking that maybe this idea of triplets is uh, going beyond the chemical side of the DNA and also goes into yes. the resonant side of the DNA. It does, that does, that is true. I, I would also expect some uh, uh, groups of two, like doubles and uh, quadruples also resonating, but I think triplets is very interesting. Yes. Especially interesting it is because uh, 
Uh, seven triplets make 21 nucleotide. And 21 nucleotide is the, is uh, two turns of the double helix. Not one turn, but two turns. Yes. And um, after these two turns, the nucleotide uh, is parallel to, to each other. So basically nucleotides which are separated by two turns are the, the smallest units, smallest distance of between nucleotides which are parallel to each other. Yes. They are not parallel after one turn, but they are parallel after two turns. So that comes close again to the, what I was talking about in the beginning. So, Correct. so now we are thinking that this 21 divided by three is seven and seven might correspond to seven chakras. It is possible that I do not know. I must admit, I do not know that port portion. So that would, I mean, it's the number seven is so rare in biology and geometry. It's not that trivial. So if, if you found a number seven in DNA, that is, could be very meaningful. It is, I would think, yes. I think right. that you are correct. Seven is a spiritual number, and so therefore can mean something quite different. So I'm uh, thinking that maybe in this double helix, two turns of the double helix, uh, there is seven times of three, and one of the first three nucleotides could be, could be correspond to the first chakra and to Monday and to the one note of the uh, musical scale and also to one planet out of main seven planets. And the seven, second three nucleotides could correspond to the Tuesday second chakra and uh, uh, the second planet and uh, the second note of the musical scale, and so that is on. a different way to look at it than we ever thought of before. So I, I am intrigued. I'm intrigued too. I'm intrigued by that because uh, many things in science do have uh, connections of this, of this kind, but uh, they have not been discovered. But I think that that is something to look into. All right. But I must go now. Oh, I have 10 minutes. So do you mind bringing, um, uh, let me see. 10 minutes is very short. Um, I would say, yeah, Leonardo da Vinci, I still want to speak to him if he is available. All right, very well. Thank you. Good day. Nice to, nice to reconnect with you. Yes, thank you for all your insights. They were fascinating. Think about that and come again with more feedback. Well, yes, you did most of the talking today. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 when I do these discoveries, you're present. So I, yes, I'm, I I'm very thankful. You're a big part of what I'm doing here. I am being are, funny with you. In, in, every tri in every triplet, there is your name. Yes. And he is here, yes. One moment. Thank you.